Bulavinaka again, boys and girls. Uh, thank you so much for uh, tuning in for our second episode for the summary translation of the 30th of April class. Our topic um, that we will be learning is the importance of uh, understanding your Yavusa, uh, Matangali and Tokotoka, which is your uh, indigenous um, uh, family tree, uh, which is important that you should know, um, especially for your dad's side and also for those of you uh, who have your mom's information or even grandparents, um, try and learn uh, more about this. Yeah, uh, And also we're going to talk a little bit about the registration of uh, uh, Fijians through the Volani Kaumbula uh, or the registration that happens in Suba Fiji. Uh, secondly, we'll also look at the new color of purple. And thirdly, we're gonna look at a very special flower, uh, the plumeria or frangipani, ombua eh, in Fijian. We will also um, revise a little bit about the cooler bird uh, that we were learning last week. Um, and an opportunity for us to appreciate this uh, beautiful bird. So we just do a little revision before we go on to our discussion. So last week we were learning about um, your Matanitu, which is your confederacy, your Yasana, which is your province, Koro, which is your village, Kornivasu, which is the village of your mom or your mother. And then this week, your homework was to look at your Tikina, which is your district, your Vusa, your tribe, Matangali is your clan, and then Itokotoka is your household or family um, unit. So I hope that you have um, received your template to work on your second um, homework. And I would like to acknowledge these 10 students uh, who co communicated with me and also sent in their first um, homework. So a very good morning or afternoon or bulavinaka, depending on uh, yeah, whenever you're watching this uh, recording, to Pelenaisa Christina Langilangi Luma, Losalini Debra Taimatuku, their sisters, and they originally come from Ravualu. Totoya in Lao. Um, Bulevinaka Vaseva Thegat, she's from Bangandavi on the island of Ovalau, province of Lomeviti. Mere Datanasina, she was actually the first student to submit her homework, homework number one. So, really want to acknowledge her. She's from Vatua Lekutu in Bua. Madhu Marida and Honorina are from Bua and Vasu Namosi. Naka for listening in from Makoi. Um, number six, Viliame Isikeli Ravula. Uh, both of them are brothers from the Kuibuna in Wainimbuka. Fria Lomakeve from Nanduri in Madhuata. Veniana Dangusau from the island of Wailevu, uh, the uh, district of Esawa, province of Mba. Sioka Tami Tokalau from Nangara Ono in Kandavu. And Katarina Ngukirewa from Kambariki, Nambukelevu, Kandavu. So thank you so much uh, for tuning in and uh, connecting with everyone in this class. And uh, also I decided to acknowledge uh, these two sisters who were the first ones to submit this second homework. Vili Maina Irieli, Asena Serao, and they are originally from the village of uh, Momi, uh, Tokotoka Wereninri, Matangali Nangwabui, Yavusa Leonihabu, Tikina Ravirabi, and the province of Nanronga. Isn't that beautiful to see that a child in Fiji has all this information attached to their names? So today, as I said earlier on, we're going to be looking at the importance of knowing your Tikina, Yavusa, and Tokatoka, and looking at the, the Volani Kaumbula, VKB, or the registration that you must have if you are a Fijian child. So ask your mom and dad if you are being registered. We're going to look at our new color, Loka Loka, and then we're going to be looking at the various types of Plumeria, Frangipani, Ombua. 
and really like to encourage you all as well to continue to sing your Koviti song. So just a quick revision, remember your 14 provinces. So very important here that you know the 14 and don't forget the, uh, don't forget the island of Rotuma. Yeah? So the list is here uh, for you to read and uh, say as well. So make sure you say these places and know where they are using your Fijian map. And of course, we've been learning about the different greetings in Fiji, different parts of Fiji all have these different greetings so make sure you learn them all and if you meet someone who's from this place uh, greet them this way okay so it's very important that they acknowledge that way so these are all the different Bakambul uh, again as we move over to Vanolevo so this is just a reminder for those of you who have just been on this class for the first time and then also the Vosa Vosa Vakaviti, or sorry, the Vosa Vakaviti, where it actually began. I just want to clear the fact that um, the Fijian language has been used for over, you know, 3,000 uh, years. Um, but the actual, um, the actual writing to actually put them into the alphabet, as we know now, is actually in Latin, which was put together by... Um, Reverend David Cargill. So he has to put it in such a way that we can read it as what you're looking at now using the basis of the Latin language. So that was really interesting. But the language is ancient in itself. So it's very good to kind of clear that up. And so remember the cooler bird. So next time you go to Fiji, don't forget to go to the cooler bird park and check out this pretty, pretty bird. And these are some of the words that uh, captured the word kula. So make sure you read them all and appreciate and add to this list. Of course, with the various uses of the new, and I just wanted to read out a serkali or poem. So if you look below the tree, there's a serkali at the bottom, which is called Navara. Vara is the actual um, solid form of the inner part of the coconut okay when the, the liquid and the flesh uh, joins together and kind of you no know, reaches maturity so just before it reaches maturity it turns into the vara and you can use that to replant the coconut so at this time i would like to read out this poem and i would like you to also follow with me uh, if you know how to s s pronounce these words in fijian so take your time and you can repeat it as you go along or even re-watching this, this video. Navara. Navara ni niu enda ulaukana, ngone lalai er talitaka, wetadini er walataka, gau navara, gau navara. Eh? So we're gonna read it one more time. Navara. Navara ni niu enda ulaukana, ngone lalai er talitaka, wetadini er walataka, gau navara, gau navara. And so these are the various new idioms and the various new words. So make sure you learn this well, okay? And then here, the frangipani. So I did some research as to why this um, bua flower is called frangipani and why it is called plumeria. So first of all, the frangipani or the plumeria, sometimes they're used interchangeably. Um, is uh, found in Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, Brazil, even in the northern part of Florida. So it's kind of found within the warm regions of the world. And uh, the word plumeria actually is named after the 17th century French botanist, um, Charles Plumier. Um, very interesting how, right, it's named after him. And also the word frangipani is derived from an Italian nobleman, Marquis Frangipani who actually created perfume using um, the, this particular flower, going back to the seven, 16th century, rather. So amazing, right, to actually look at these words and trying to understand where they originally come from. Okay, so... So here, we can see the uh, 
Polynesian word. So in Fiji, we call it mbua, uh, but in the Polynesian areas of the Pacific, they call it pua. Yes, yeah, so you'll see that they replace the word B with P. So here in Hawaii, they also call it pua. And in Fiji, there are two types. There's a mboni valangi and there's a mboni vit. And you can use this salu salu, you can use these flowers as salu salu. So salu salu are the garland, right? And um, also the wood from the mboa, you can also use it for carving. And uh, another word here which is called mboa tava tava uh, was um, very interesting, named after the province of mboa, yeah, which is actually one of the um, seven brothers that actually migrated from Verata to move to Mbua and he took this Mbua plant and planted it in Mbua where it is now and that is why the province is named uh, after this particular plant and also his name is Mbua Tava Tava. Isn't that amazing? And the other thing too we must acknowledge is that the Mbua or the Mbua Nibiti, um, it can be used for a, a traditional medicine and yeah? the Wabakaviti. The um, the stem or the bark um, can be uh, scraped and mixed with um, warm water and mixed and it actually given to um, young lactating mums um, to make them feel a little bit healthier after they give birth. So what a wonderful blessing yeah, from our grandmothers. On the right hand side, uh, here you can see um, the mbua mbua. These are the words uh, from the word mbua. So let's read it from the top. Mbua mbua, mbua nisawana, mbua toka, mbua nromo, waini mbua mbua, the kau nitambua, and delay nambua. Okay? And I would like you to add any more mbua words that you uh, may know and add it into the list. So now to our idiom. So I decided to choose an idiom or proverb that is connected with the mbua plant. Okay, it makes sense, right? And so I decided to choose this. I can read it slowly. Dui sevanga nambua katea. Dui sevanga nambua katea. So here it basically is translated to the English uh, idiom, you will reap what you sow. Okay? So in Fiji, it's like, Dui vingoma nga nambua ni nambua So you will actually get what you invested um, something for. Yeah, so uh, you will reap what you sow. So that is the Fijian idiom for our class today. And also I want to say that the mbua nisawana, which is actually one of the species of the mbua, it's really, really sweet smelling and it is used for um, uh, making um, the coconut oil um, into uh, you know, to kind of as fragrance. Yeah, isn't that amazing? Our grandmothers do this back in the day. And our indigenous Fijian counting, there's three of them here, and I would like you to try and find out the answer. So I won't give you the answer. I will give you the answer. The first one is 10 fish. Tininaika sanduana. I want you to find that out. Tinina tambua sanduana. Tinina vonu sanduana. Okay, so this is the ancient way of counting and um, you can see at the top one is to do with the fish, second one is the whale's tooth and the third one is turtle. Yeah, so when they count it this way, um, you have to find out the answer on your own and make sure you email me the answer as well. And uh, we're now we're going to move into the segment of colors. So this is our new color, Loka Loka. Can you repeat after me? Loka Loka. So Loka Loka is purple in Fijian. And you can see the picture here that this is a purple yam. And did you know that the Fijian word Loka Loka actually originated from this particular yam? This yam is actually called Loka Loka and the color purple was derived from this yam. Isn't that amazing? And it's actually very nutritious too. But not only that the uh, the um, yam is uh, purple, it's also something else that I'm going to show you now. Kumala. The kumala or the sweet potato also has a variety that has this beautiful color. And it is also delicious and it's good for you. It's got a lot of vitamins 
and a lot of very good minerals that is good for your body so i hope if you haven't had a chance to eat this uh, purple uh, uh, sweet potato or purple yam uh, if you go to fiji or if you're listening from fiji uh, hopefully you can have uh, a chance to access this beautiful food if you have some relatives who are planting uh, who have farms either in viti level or no level or whichever place you're from and get them to cook it for you and have uh, an opportunity uh, to um, taste this uh, very beautiful food that was eaten and consumed by our ancestors thousands of years ago. And here we see the different types of ubi or yams. So these are the different names. So on the left hand side, I'll read it out slowly. Tiboli, Rauba, Kawai. And then there are two types of uh, ubi Ubi Mbalavu and Ubi Leka. It's kind of two big categories. So Ubi Mbalavu are the long Ubi and Ubi Leka are the short ones. Now I just want to point out here on the island of Vivia, which is the only organic island in the whole of the Pacific in Lao, um, in 2011 they had a competition, a Ubi and uh, you know farming competition and the winner for the Ubi Leka had a whopping 53 kilograms for one ubi. Isn't that amazing? And on the right hand side, I've got the uh, names of the ubi in the province of Namosi. And I'll read it out slowly. Botiki, Viwa, Tunimbua, Voli, and Wayaka. So if you're from, uh, if you're from another province in Fiji, please feel free um, to add in the various types of ovi that uh, you will be familiar with through your family. And so that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed uh, that short uh, video um, that is uh, sharing with us, uh, with all of us, the uh, color purple, the importance of uh, recording um, your history through your Yabusa, your Tokotoka, your Matangali, uh, as this was uh, uh, put together by the late Ratu um, Josefa Vanayale Alisukuna and thanks to the colonial government at that time who really wanted to register all lands. So 90% of our land is um, owned by our indigenous people. And uh, for our next set of classes, please don't forget to subscribe uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, Talano with Dr. T. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message me on Facebook, on my Facebook page, Talano with Dr. T, uh, as well as through the YouTube channel. At this point, I would like to acknowledge uh, my family uh, for putting this uh, be uh, beautiful video together and um, to Kali Vunidilo for being the cultural advisor, uh, to Leo Vunidilo for being the technical um, YouTube uh, and video technician and, and editor. Um, to Merowe Rita Bunindilo for being the uh, social media savvy queen and uh, of course to myself for giving the time to share this with all of you children. So I hope that you all enjoyed this um, session and I look forward to see you in our next class. Nisa Mwademanga.